E. Pluribus Unum is found on the United States seal and currency. It translates into one out of many. This expression, plus many are called but few are chosen, refers to those considered humble, focused, determined, hardworking, and patriotic. As you will see, these powerful expressions describe the life of Larry Edwards Gossett. Larry was born in December 1947 in Cynthiana, Kentucky. His parents owned and operated a 190-acre farm that Larry grew up and worked on. Larry learned baseball from his older brother Ernie, which served him well. He became the leadoff batter for the first game ever for Harrison County's Little League All-Stars. He later pitched a two-hitter, 10-0 shutout in All-Star play, increasing his self-confidence. Living near the Cynthiana Harrison County Airport, Larry took his first ride in a Piper Tri-Pacer at the age of 12. He would spend his afternoons hangar flying with pilots who were happy to include Larry, even at his young age, and he soon got a job at the airport trading his salary for flying lessons. Reading an article in Air Progress magazine about a new type of military jet capable of flying 1,400 miles an hour, Larry, at age 14, knew what he wanted to do, and that was to fly the F-4 Phantom. Word got back to his father that Larry was a bright young kid with a smile on his face, working hard at the airport, and Mr. Gossett was proud to sign Larry's FAA form so he could solo at age 16. In 1966, Larry enrolled at the University of Kentucky, joining the ROTC and pursuing history and political science majors. He was a walk-on baseball player for three years, pitched winning baseball as a letterman. Balancing sports, academics, and his military training, Larry learned at UK to never give up and keep trying. He graduated in 1970, earning his Air Force ROTC commission as a second lieutenant, entering flight school. Larry graduated second in his class of 43. He was faced with a fork in the road decision. He was given a choice between flying the F-4 Phantom Jet or the C-141 cargo jet. The C-141 being a more direct path to a later career in the airlines. Larry asked, Lord, what do you want me to do? He knew the war was coming and his love of country weighed in as well. He decided to realize his dream of flying the F-4 Phantom. He was transferred to Homestead Air Force Base, where he was greeted with a picture of an F-4 flying behind a MiG-21. The inscription read, Welcome to fighter country. I am not afraid to go into the valley of death because I'm the meanest SOB in the valley. At Homestead, Larry sensed a different learning attitude and awakening. He was trained to win in a super competitive environment. He learned that a lot of it is attitude which is the thing that had been shaping him since his early years. He was assigned to Hahn Air Force Base in Germany. He quickly rose to flight leader, even though he was just a first lieutenant. He was one of the first to reach this position at such an early age. Next, he was selected to go to Nellis Air Force Base for testing the latest laser bombing technology. He was checked out in the Maverick air-to-ground anti-tank missile and became the flight leader for the first ever air-to-ground anti-tank guided weapon missile test in the European poor weather environment. In 1976, Larry was hand-picked as one of the four pilots representing the USA to participate in the Air Force's Central Europe Tactical Weapons Meet at baden Solingen, competing and winning the low-level contest against six NATO countries. At Han, Larry would spend the next three Christmases sitting in an F-4 on a flight line, heavily armed and ready to fly into enemy territory if ordered during the Cold War. While at Han, he was promoted to captain and completed a master's degree in executive development of public service through Ball State University. Larry also met Pam Hawkins, who was a high school guidance counselor working with the Department of Defense. Leaving Europe, Larry was assigned as an F-4 pilot instructor at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. It was there that he and Pam would marry in 1978. Larry was honored by being selected to go to the highly regarded Fighter Weapons School at Nellis. This presented another fork in the road decision. Larry believed completing the program could lead to advancing his military profession. Still, he now had a wife and young family and he knew it was time for a change. At the officers club, a concerned friend told Larry to call Federal Express and ask for flight operations. Larry was hired in 1979 as a commercial pilot for the then-fledgling Federal Express Corporation. While at FedEx, he held positions as a line pilot, simulator instructor pilot, and line check airman flying the Falcon DA-20, Boeing 727, and retired as a DC-10 pilot after 30 years. Since retirement, Larry has believed in giving back. 
He established an aviation fund through the Bluegrass Community Foundation for young people interested in making flying a career. Scholarships assist those attending aviation camps or pursuing other interests in aviation. Larry and Pam have two children, David Gossett and Joan Oates, and together have five grandchildren who give great pleasure to Larry and Pam. As one out of many, Larry has been hardworking, focused, and purposeful throughout his successful military life. It is therefore fitting that Larry Edwards Gossett be enshrined into the official Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.